Hey guys, my name is David Lewis, higher level maths and biology teacher here at the Dublin Academy of Education and I'm really excited to take a, a lifetime worth of maths and put it into about 9-10 minutes of useful exam tips and information, that you, practical stuff that you can use to help improve your grade. So I want to start off at the absolute basic level here. I won't be given like, you know, I think this is coming up, I think that is coming up. I think that there is a bigger ways that we can clean up our study of maths that will shift the needle on our H3 to H1s, our, our you know, H5s to H2s, whatever you're looking for before we get into the maths itself. First thing that I want to set in stone for you guys is being good at maths and being good at the maths exam and getting as many of those 125 points that you want are completely separate things. They are separate things. Yes, it obviously helps a little bit to be good at multiplying six by two and stuff like that. Like that would be great. We got a calculator for that. A lot of this stuff here is a mindset. The weird thing is, this is one of the only subjects on the Leaving Cert where you have to go in and not just rove memorize stuff, but perform a skill. A lot of those skills though can be buried, like tying your lace or driving a car into your subconscious, and you will just whip out that tool when you see a certain word. So even though it is performing a skill, a lot of this stuff can be memorized or can be done before you literally go into the exam itself. We are looking at over a decade of Project Maths now and the questions they have asked, they've pretty much explored the entirety of the syllabus. So between this and mock questions, you can pretty much see almost every skill that has not appeared. And those few skills that have not appeared yet, and only there's a couple of them, you would earmark them as predictions for your leaving cert. Now, I can't predict if a trig question is gonna have the number eight or the number nine, but I can, it's very easy to predict I'm going to be using this tool or a trig functions question will come up or a trig rules question will come up and, and so on. You just have to show off these rules. The only difference when question the question is, is the numbers. Now, some people, when I mentioned trig functions or trig, you'd be like, what are you talking about? So let's take an even further step back. The math syllabus has been set in stone for a while. The math syllabus is all online for you to see. As I say with every single subject, your teacher's job in school is way different to my job as a grind school teacher, as someone whose sole job is to get you exam results. They have to teach you to be a well-rounded math student, to inquire, to go into certain aspects yourself, to, to work into it. My job is you get the result and you move on with your life. That is literally my job. So the way I look at it here is there are many things inside your maths book that simply aren't examinable. Many things that they can't ask, they, not, not they won't, they can't ask. Many things that are put in place for students who find leaving certain maths easy to you know, challenge them in the classroom. So you and I, we're working on quadratics. Someone who's finding them very easy, go, hey, but you try this one. This is top, top tier level one. And a lot of students don't realize that. Get uh, confidence is a word you hear a lot in maths. They get thrown, their confidence gets knocked. We're going, I can't do that one. And sometimes you might be saying, well, it's not the leaving cert, so it's fine. So what you can do is you can go to the syllabus and the syllabus literally tells you in plain English, not in maths, everything you need to know. It literally says what you would need to know, i.e. what the examiner is allowed to make questions on, what they are allowed to make questions on. And the fact that that's set means that it can't, I don't know, I don't teach a language, but it can't just spiral off forever and ever and ever and ever. Yes, we have harder questions, but they're all related to these skills. The next thing I would say is, we know now, we've known for years that maths is positioned beautifully. Bro, it's 125 points, the extra 25, literally for being in the room almost, and it's ripped in two. And it's not as if we're kind of wondering, what, what's gonna appear on paper one, and what's gonna appear on paper two? We know today. We absolutely know today what's on paper one and paper two. There are a couple of random weird crossovers, like, trig functions appearing in functions or simultaneous equations in the line of the circle. But there's, a, there's so few and far between, it's almost irrelevant up to closer to the exam. So you can look at your paper one, okay? You can look at your paper one and you can say to yourself, okay, oh, where do I start? Well, I think it's very clear. If I asked you where you should start, what's the most important chapter on the leaving cert? If you were a teacher, you would obviously say to me, algebra, and I would agree. And I don't mean leaving cert algebra, I mean first to third year algebra. Some of you guys would probably have to go back to your third year book or ask your younger brother and sister 
and you will be better spent instead of looking at calculus you'll be better spent spending two hours blasting out very simple algebra you could be a genius at maths but if you don't understand the language of algebra you're going to have a trouble you're going to have a hard time on the exam the same way if english wasn't your first language and you were only getting broken bits of what i'm saying it'd be quite hard to understand interpret what i'm saying it's nothing on you it's just that you don't have you don't have the language of speaking in it. every single chapter I mean, I mean, go through them, every chapter, complex numbers, logs, obviously algebra, functions, calculus, every single one on paper one, financial math, sequences series, involves algebra. Paper two, pretty much as well, line, circle, trig, all algebra, geometry, algebra, even some of stats and probability have bits of algebra in it. You can't do that. You can't do the chapters. You want to make your problems, not algebra problems, the issues you have, you want them, first of all, to be in trigonometry, etc. So go back and look at that. The second thing I would say is not all chapters marks-wise are created equally. For example, most years we would be saying algebra leaving certain questions themselves would be a short question. Obviously, as we said, we've used it everywhere. Complex numbers, short question. Some people might even think, depending on your goals, of leaving that chapter out and just saying, I'm not going to do that question. But things that are more important maybe might be like, you know, the calculus, or you might want to nail down the understanding of sequences and series. Those sort, those sort of ideas and figuring out what chapters are the most important for you to build up your grade, I think is, a, is definitely an important idea. I'll tell you what ones I feel are really big right now. We're looking at, at st uh, we're looking at stats, we're looking at trigonometry, we're looking at calculus and functions. If you can nail those four, nail those four, your grade is up to, and any leaving cert paper is up to such a level that everything else is just topping it off, topping it off, topping it off. The worst thing you could do is spend all your time, energy, and resources on a chapter or a part of a chapter that's not worth that much. So how can you figure out what chapters are worth even more than others or what concepts are worth even more than others? Well, you can obviously look at past papers. Uh, you can see how many marks they're worth. You could follow my exam pyramid. That's, a, that's another thing you, that you could do as well. Uh, and once you get that into your head, you start to realize, actually, wait a second. In each individual chapter, there's only like four or five types of questions they can ask. It's almost like a little mind map. If you double click on trigonometry, you've got trig functions, trig rules. They're the two big things. By a, they're more important than everything else by a mile. And then you've got uh, trig equations and trig identities. Marks-wise, worth a hell of a lot less. If you can start to get these things in order and prioritize what you are studying, I think that that's, that's pretty important. A lot of students come to you, oh, I can't do this really hard calculus. And I'll be like, okay, well, that's uh, been asked once for five marks over the last 10 years. So you want to make sure that you're prioritizing important things. The, and this, now this last thing I'm going to show you here is probably the most important thing I can tell you by a mile in terms of affecting your grade. And it's not a prediction. It's nothing else. It's the, the thing that I use, I-M-E-M. I-M-E-M. Your grade is going to largely be determined by your ability to I and the first M. What the hell is that? Your grade is going to be determined by, number one, I, your ability to identify what type of question it is. How many times in your maths career since primary school have you been like, I could do it when the teacher was doing it. Oh, it makes sense. And so now I get it. Now I know what one it is when my teacher went through it. But you go into an exam, you're like, uh, why is it in Latin? I have no idea what this is. You have to work on identifying questions. That might be going through past papers, not doing any numbers and just going, Oh, there's the there's that word. It's a trig function. There's that thing. It's uh, it's financial maths pension or whatever it is. You got to work on that. That's literally a skill. It's all all okay when you've got all algebra together or all trig together or whatever. But working on identifying a question is that's a starting block. If you can't identify, you're not going to be able to start and get any marks. The next one is M. There's so many different ways to do every single math sum. So many different ways. My M here stands for method. So identify method. I try to use the way which might not always be the, the quickest, the slickest maths way. It's the way that absorbs the marking scheme. But to be honest, it doesn't matter. Whatever method works for you is the method you use. And you don't have to worry about uh, your friends in a different school, mine, whoever it is. 
whatever method works for you. What we've done is we've slipstreamed the methods in the academy here so students have to learn less, but it, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a method to answering it, then you're good. I am E. E is, is actually arguably, in terms of changing your maths grade, the least important. And that's for executing on the method. That's actually doing the numbers. If you mess up the numbers, you get like a minus one, you get a slip. If you said three plus seven is 11, they don't take all the marks off you. You've done the method, you've identified it. That's the most important part by a mile. Remember, you can pass the leaving cert, get high 40s, early 50s by not getting one question correct. If you get the low partial credit in every question, I'm not saying aim for that, but I'm just saying that's a, um, that's a comforting thought. Without get, you can do it without getting one sum correct. So the E, the executing, yeah, people spend a lot of time on that after their teacher, their book has told them what one it is while they're copying another method. You need to work on identifying and having a method in your back pocket. The numbers will start to take care of themselves. I, M, E, and the last M is marking scheme. The last M is marking scheme. Now, the marking scheme is gonna change your grade whether you like it or not. The marking scheme is gonna change your grade, but it's up to you if it changes it for the better or if it changes it for the worse, if it drags you down. Very often students can get all the numbers right in a question. They might uh, forget the units or forget to explain their finish or they might not do it to the correct decimal place or they might not realize that it said verify your answer or the question said hence, so you had to use the thing from before and that a lot of non maths related marks can be taken away from you. And it can literally pull down your grade or if you wanna look on the bright side, if you're a student that's finding it hard, it can boost your grade massively without really getting that much better at the actual maths. So overall, finite amount of things, the stories might change for sure. Not every chapter is created equally. Start with algebra and as you are studying, I am E M. I am E M. I literally give students exams. I literally give students uh, homework and full on projects where they are identify method, identify method. The more you can do of that, the more confident you are when you go into an exam to execute for the numbers. And then you can start to actually take advantage of the marking scheme that is there to help you out. My name is David Lewis. I have a maths and biology teacher here at the Dublin Academy. I hope this Academy Bite has helped you out to really center, direct yourself in a subject that is overhyped, absolutely overhyped. And I hope that you can take some of this confidence in to changing your grade. So the very best of luck.